Greetings, everybody, and welcome back to Meet the Business with Scale. I'm your host. I am the one and only Henry. Everybody, how do you do? Welcome. And today, joining me over online is Sean and John Brown from Two Dogs Coffee. How, do, how are you? Very good. Good, yeah, yeah, good. yeah. I'm glad you're all right. See, the sun is shining over there, which is great, by the looks of it. <laughs> well, just about, yeah, just about. Awesome. Right, everybody. Now, before we start today's interview and learning about Two Dogs Coffee, you can, of course, little shout out here. You can find us on LinkedIn and Facebook, as well as Instagram at, at scale. Also, if you're on the go, if you've got stuff to do, you can also find the audio podcast version of this show on SoundCloud, Spotify, and Apple Music. So without further ado, let's meet our new friends. Hey, again, everybody. So tell me, what sparked the idea to begin the company? John wanted to retire, wants to retire. He's working at the moment as a project engineer. And uh, I've always worked in hospitality. So we were looking for something that we could build up now and then carry on once John's retired. And nobody retires properly these days. So we're going to have to work till we drop. <laughs> so we thought we'd do something that we actually enjoy doing. So uh, we had a look at a couple of projects and then decided on the coffee. So originally we looked at a, a microbrewery, but at the time it was um, everybody was into microbreweries and there were a lot of them about. Um, we then came across an article that said for every pub that shuts, two coffee shops open. So uh, as I said, I've been in hospitality before and had my own cafe. So we thought about roasting coffee. So um, that's what we did. John. Yeah, so uh, I put myself on a, on a roasting course and put a, done a, a company in Winchester to learn the basics. Um, and we just took it from there. Um, and it's been quietly, steadily growing ever since. Awesome. So please tell me now, you saw an opening in the market. You saw how you could sort of fit into that. Um, what was that opening that you found and how did you feel that you could um, use it? Well, I did some I did some research on the rise of uh, artisan coffee shops within the UK. Uh, and I used the business model that they use in um, New Zealand and Australia where a lot of coffee shops have their own on-site roastery. So they roast in fresh coffee and... Um, really on the premises where they serve it. So I thought that was a pretty good idea. Um, and I, I noticed there's a, an upward trend of roastery setting up in the UK. Uh, we have a couple in, in Wales, but not that many. So we've seen an opening where, okay, um, let's see if we can set up a roasting business with the aim of potentially supplying delis and, and doing food festivals and markets selling our product. Awesome. So right now, tell me about the name of your company. I mean, I'm going to have a guess here with Two Dogs um, Coffee Company. There's going to be some dogs involved in the story. Me, myself, massive dog lover fan, but do tell, how'd you come up with the, the name of your company? Uh, well, you're right. Two dogs. We've got two dogs. <laughs> we <have> two dogs. <laughs> so which you'll probably hear barking because they're very annoyed that they've been shut out. <laughs> so every now and again, they'll start barking. But yes, we've got um, two dogs, Jack Russell and... Um, to Lakeland Cross, so they've become the um, they've become the symbol of the of the. Of the well, I've got um, a Jack Russell myself as well, so that's just really, really, really great to hear. Yeah, full of character, full of character, like my wife. <laughs> and the coffee. <laughs> yeah, and the coffee. So. So when it came to imagery and identity, how did you go about sort of starting that and creating your own visual presence, your own visual look for the company? Well, we started off the two things, obviously, with the two dogs and the fact that we're in the Ronda. Um, so our original imagery, my son designed our logo for the two dogs. Um, and we also used a lot of background shots of the Ronda and Triorki. Um, we have now rebranded. Um, so it's more, it's less to do with the area and more to, to do with the coffee because uh, where the coffee comes from, because we don't want to, to 
necessarily um, have to stay with the with the valley theme. Uh, should we decide to retire to West Wales, which would be lovely, <laughs> we'll take it with us. So, um, yeah, so that's how we, we decided on that. So how long overall did it take you to, cre- to create the identity of the company? I mean, did it start off as like, we're going to go down this route, but actually halfway through you felt, no, actually this route's maybe better. Did it, was it always the uh, one idea from the trip or did you deviate? You know, did you come up with something new on the way? I think the, uh, I think the main aim um, from the start was to offer freshly roasted coffee. That was the, that was the aim. Um, and we've, we've gone down different routes um, and different avenues, but we've always been able to check ourselves to say, well, look, is this working? And if not, um, can we deflect to, to, a, to another direction, I suppose? But I think the, all, the, all, the whole aim of the business is to be as flexible as possible and responsive to the needs of business. Yeah. So even though we've gone in the direction of, as Sean said, setting up in, in Triochi, in the Ronda, um, our aim is is not to sort of um, be stereotypical of the valleys uh, around the coal mine industries and, and the past. This is about looking forward uh, and offering new futures and new opportunities. And um, yeah, it's just all about being flexible, understanding your business, where you want to take the business and keeping you, you the USP. Uh, and our USP is selling freshly roasted coffee, quality coffee. So when it came to starting the company, can you talk about the sort of legal fees and the and that sort of part about, you know, the fees and stuff you have to do about setting up the company? I mean, what did you have to go through? And, you know, can you tell us about your experience with that? Uh, well, we had to register the business. Um, we also had to go to um, the food and hygiene people to get that registered with them as well. Um um, yeah, so I mean, it's not, it wasn't a huge amount of fees. Um, we just registered the company with Companies House, um, which I think it's, I don't know, it's not even 50 quid, I don't think. I'm not mm. sure, mind. Um, and then we had to register with the council and with the um environmental food environmental health so that's what we did in the beginning we had all our checks done um having run a cafe before i was quite um competent on sorting out all the paperwork what we needed uh in fact i think i overdid it a bit the, the guy was a bit surprised when he came to do our check because um he wasn't even sure whether coffee was classed as a food but we went ahead as if it was anyway so got all our um, all our legal stuff in place so that was okay we started off in a shed in the, in the garden so we had to make sure that that was all safe for producing a food product so awesome so now tell me going forward now obviously um when you start um, setting up the company, it's all going, did you really want to have a more physical presence in the world with, you know, with flyers, you know, newspaper articles and advertisements, or did you want more of a digital presence online with social media and all, and um, sort of that domain when it came to your company? Both, yeah. I mean, originally we, we started, we was, the intention was to sell online. So uh, we started off with um, setting up uh, an online shop we set up a website um, and an online shop, um, but we found that it wasn't. We weren't getting that much. I didn't know enough about how to get people to the website, so um, we carried on with it. But we also decided to go out to markets and food festivals and the like. So uh, we then went uh, signed up with a lot of local markets, and we went further afield with the bigger. Um, food festivals like Abergavenny Food Festival, um, Brecon Food Festival. So we were going out about three times a week regularly at, to markets to sell um, and doing the bigger events as well and kept on with the online. So since, um, since the COVID, uh, obviously, we, there's very few markets that we can go to. There's a couple of food markets we can still go to. Um, but we found that the online uh, sales have increased dramatically. 
um, which is uh, partly, I think, due to the COVID and partly due to, um, as I went on a few courses about driving business to your website and all that sort of thing. So that's probably helped as well. So. Awesome. So let, let's talk right now, actually, about the product your, itself, you know, the glorious coffee. I mean, when it came to like, you know, the packaging, the design, how, you know, you're going to present it to the world. Can you tell us sort of more about, you know, that and, you know, how, how you got it manufactured, how you got it, you know, um, at, at, in the final product, so to speak, the contacts and everything? Well, I think, um, I think initially we, we banded a couple of ideas around and we were very fortunate that Sean and is a graphic designer, uh, he has his own company. So he was able to um, obviously massively reduce the costs for us to be able to get the branding up and running uh, and, and the flexibility to be able to chop and change the design until, until we got it to what it is now. So the company logo of the two dogs. Um, and obviously we've had to register, uh, we've seen the need to register now going forward. Um, and we've just continually improved um, the packaging as we've, as we've developed it, you know, um, understanding what other, other companies are doing, how they are marketing their product. Um, not that we want to compare to other companies within their packaging, but just to pick out the good and bad points, um, really. And what we try to do is to give a, a unique product so people will be able to, like the Costa logo, people understand the Costa logo. Uh, and one day, two dogs... We'll be competing against Costa. Happy days. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's talk about you now actually about storage. I mean, you know, obviously when you've got so much product, you know, how, how do you deal with storage um, when it comes to, you say, where do you store it? How much product do you have? You know, stuff like that. That's a big issue. Yeah, well, we, we try to, um, and as Sean said, uh, we've been doing markets regularly and, and we try to keep the product as freshly roasted. So we turn over and roast more or less to order, but we've always got about a week's stock in the in the roastery um, at any one point. Um, so it's, it's basically roasted um, within two to well, one to two weeks of people getting it. Um, so we try to keep it uh, as a quick tur turnover. I mean, coffee's got quite a good shelf life anyway, but the whole emphasis is on freshly roasted coffee. Um, and people have to understand that. You've got to, excuse me, I've got to drop some coffee. <laughs> Fair enough. Exactly. Say. Coffee at the moment. So, um, yeah. So the company that we buy the beans from, we're, um, we can order one day normally. But at the moment, it's obviously it's different. But normally, we order the coffee one day and it comes the next day, and then we roast it the next day and it can go out the next day. So it can be that fresh. Um, but we do keep some stock. Yeah, but as I said, we started off in a shed in the garden with a small roaster, tiny little roaster, uh, which I don't know if you could see behind me, it's up there on the shelf. Um, and then we had to, obviously we needed to get a bigger roaster, so we've now converted our garage, which is where we are now, into a roaster and we've got a fair bit of storage and stuff in here. But we are now getting to the stage where we need a bigger roaster again. Um, so we're now having to think about moving out to a, to a premises away from the house. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's been all right, isn't it? It's handy yeah. having it in the house, <laughs> but it is starting to take over. Awesome. So tell me about you say your customer base i mean how did you work out what your who your customer were really and you know the clientele base and how did you find them and how did you attract them to your company well i think i think in the early days as sean said we had, we had the luxury pre-covid that we were attending as many farmers markets and local markets as possible so that was allowing us to get our product out uh, and we started initially by offering samples of all the coffees that we do um, so people could taste before they before they buy. Uh, that's quite onerous to set up in the morning to, 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 to take all that. Um, but that's what we had to do to make people aware of the quality of the product that we, we were selling. Uh, and from there, we've, we've grown the customer base around that, you know, because uh, there's, there's nothing like tasting the coffee to decide which coffees you like. Um, you can't do that in the supermarket. You can't buy the coffee and try it and then take it back and say, oh, I don't like it. They might have something to say about that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. 
So, I mean, we, we didn't look, we weren't looking at any sort of age or anything like that. What we were looking at was people that appreciate coffee, but we didn't necessarily want people who were um, obsessed with coffee, if you know what I mean. We wanted people who were, um, that just enjoy good coffee. Um, so that's who we've been aiming at. Uh, so going to the farmers markets has, has got us that sort of base, but online we now find that we're going all over the country. So uh, we're selling all over the country and um, to all age groups and all sorts of people really. Don't mind who you sell it to. <laughs> so following on, following on really from that, um, you know, how much of your marketing, say, goes to electronic marketing, the digital marketing, social media, websites, campaigns, and how much now goes to, like, um, real-world marketing, print, and um, shouts out on the radio and TV and farmer's markets? Um, most, most of our is online now. Mm. Um, obviously, because the market, a lot of the markets have shut down. Um, we now, and we've also now converted our van so that we can sell cups of coffee out of the back so we've got obviously got the signage on the van we've got the gazebo that's all marked up logos up and whatever but that's really about we don't do flyers we do ma uh, magazine uh, adverts um in quite a few of the foodie magazines um and the welsh ones um and we advertise locally in local freebie magazines and the like. Um, so we recently joined the Fine Food Guild, so uh, that gives us a connection. Um, so yeah, but the majority of it is through social marketing and the like. So looking back from the beginning of your company to now, can you talk us about some of the sort of like trials and tribulations that you've had over the years and how you have overcome them as examples to our um, audience, you know, if they ever come across these situations? Trials and tribulations. Trials and tribulations. Um, understanding, understanding your process um, is probably one of the biggest um, obstacles initially to understand uh, the drop temperatures, the, all the variables that impact on the quality taste of the product. Um, Obviously, as you mentioned earlier, when we buy the product, we have to make sure the humidity, I check the humidity daily and record it. Um, and I record all the various process parameters. By nature, my job is a project engineer. So I'm fairly sort of switched on with putting processes into, into companies. So understanding your variables, I think, is the biggest one. Um, to get a consistency of roast, but also to get a consistency of taste. Um, and I think once you understand those variables, um, and you need to be diligent around it as well, so you need to monitor regularly and understand all the variables. Because um, at the end of the day, the customer will decide whether or not the product is good. And the last thing you want is to give him a varying product in taste and quality. You know, so understand understand your process initially right from the start, um, and I think that will put you in good stead. I think a general um, point of view for business is uh, knowing all the processes, all the legal loopholes you have to go through. Um, and I found um, in Wales, anyway, I don't know whether this is just Wales or whether it goes all over, um, there's quite a few, uh, like Business Wales, um, there's a Cow Wayne, which is uh, another one, there's an another uh, business called ice whales but obviously you can have the same sort of things in in england or scotland um who will give you free help uh, and the best idea is just to take everything that you can go on as many um workshops as you can find out and they'll tell you all the legal stuff tell you how to go about it virtually lead you by the hand through it so it is worth taking um, any help you can get from anybody anyway <laughs> it just it just helps it's so it can be so confusing when you're setting up a business um to know what you have to do and, and all the legal stuff so just take whatever help you can 
Awesome. Now I've got to ask this question and I'm going to say in advance, forgive the pun. Um, but with so many other coffee companies trying to be top dog, um, <laughs> how do you fight to become the top dog? I'm very embarrassed. I even used that pun already. <laughs> I, I think, I think you have to let the, the customer make that decision. Really. Mm. Um, we can name probably quite a few high street chain coffee shops um, that p- portray the good coffees sign, if you like. But I know a lot of people don't like their coffees. Uh, I'm not going to name these companies. Um, and I just think you have to let the customer decide. Um, but at the end of the day, our, our unique selling point is quality roasted, fresh roasted coffee. Um, and there's quite a few people that we come across on the market who say, oh, I, I, I always take my coffee with milk. And I always try to um, give them the opportunity to taste coffee in, in its raw format as a black coffee. Um, and with whole bean type roasted coffee, they might be surprised because you haven't got a lot of the bitterness. And they say, oh, that's quite sweet and you don't need milk. So it's trying to convert and educate people um, in 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 good coffee because you, know? you don't need milk and you don't need sugar with it and as soon as you start putting milk and sugar then you sort of mask in the flavors and we always try to uh, coax people to drink it black so please just to uh, round us off can you tell us about the feel 300 that um, you got from us tell us um has it helped your business has it helped you grow what have been the advantages of it and are you really happy with it uh yeah Yes, is the answer to the question. Yes, we are <laughs> we are happy with it. Uh, there are a couple of foibles with the machine uh, when you're setting it up, but predominantly we use it to fill the small coffee bags that we develop. Well, we use, okay. So these are filter drip coffee bags. Uh, it's quite a mandronic process to fill these by hand, as you can imagine, and weigh them out. So what that this allows us to do is to push these through quite quickly you now. Um, the cycle time is, is, is factored by, I would say, down by 75% in how we can process these. Um, it still leaves us other problems. Uh, there are other bottlenecks which now come up because we need to obviously automatically, automatically fill and package these into the outer sleeves. But these allow us to fill the bags fairly repeatedly uh, as far as the weight is concerned. Um, and it's been a big advantage to, to, the, to our process to the, to the extent where we probably look to buy a bigger machine going forward. Yeah. Awesome. Yes. So do you feel it's been a real return of investment for you? Uh, I think so. Yes, I yeah. think so. It certainly saved me a lot of time because I was the one that had to fill those <laughs> little bags by hand and it took forever. So I just stand in there and put the bag underneath and it doses out uh, the coffee. And yeah, it, it has saved an, a remarkable amount of time. It took me a while to get used to it, but I'm used to it got it now (laughs) but yes we would look um going forward we probably would look at buying a bigger machine um to do the the general coffee Mm. back yeah to do the larger Awesome. Well, everybody, that is the end of today's episode of Meet the Business. Thank, I want to thank John and Sean so much for being here. Thank you so so much for um, being here today. You're welcome. welcome. Take it easy. Thank you. And don't forget, everybody, if you like this video, you can always like, comment, subscribe, and go watch all the other episodes of the series. As always, I'm Henry. This has been Meet the Business. Everybody, goodbye.